Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the School of Science. My name is Luke and this is the post-match reaction for Preston North End versus Everton. One of the pre-season friendlies. Uh, Preston North End 0, Everton 3. Now, before I kick things off, unfortunately, I'm just going to mention this real quick. We are unfortunately not going to be able to get the drone out this weekend, just for the fact that due to the whole situation going on in Liverpool City Centre right now, Merseyside Police decided to take the action and they have issued a flight ban around the Liverpool City Centre. So this is pretty much a one and a half mile radius around the Royal Albert Building. So this also includes Bramley Moor Dock. It pretty much goes up to Welling up and above Wellington Dock, this one and a half mile. So unfortunately, we are not able to get the fucking drone out. This will be lifted on Monday evening at about 5 p.m. So I will be getting out around then, around five, six o'clock in the evening. I am bitterly disappointed with the whole situation at hand at the moment. I do not want to go too deeply into it just for the fact that this is an Everton channel. This is not to talk about ideologies, the whole concept of, you know, nationalities, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's just, it's a pointless mess that I cannot even try to unravel or do I want to unravel. It's just not worth the time, effort or headache. So, this is an Everton channel. It's staying an Everton channel. So, let, let's get into business. So, let's talk very quickly about the Everton game. So, before we kick things off with the proper talk about the game, I'm a little bit disappointed with the stream. The stream quality was very, very, very poor today. I was unfortunately not able to actually get to the game, not through lack of, you know, trying and everything. I wanted to get a ticket. Well, actually, no, I could get tickets because people were offering tickets left, right, and sent. Well, a couple of tickets here and there. But I had other work to be getting along with throughout the day and by the time I'd finished this work it would have been way too late for me to get to the game. It would have been about, I would have had to have got from Liverpool to Preston in the space of about 15 minutes which is impossible. But yeah, right, let's get to business shall we and we'll talk about the actual football. So yeah, uh, amidst the terrible stream I only had a limited amount of exposure to the game today but from what I've seen it was a fairly positive sort of game. You know, the the players that have been disappointing in the past couple of games have actually upped the ante a little bit. So, Cavaloon's actually put a little bit more of a shift in. He actually looks like he wants to, you know, perform well and do well for the shirts. He really did well. McNeil did a little bit better today. Harrison played really well. He's actually been one of the exceptions to the rule. He played out of the socks today. He didn't get the, you know any assists or any goals or anything, but his contribution to the game was very positive and I was very happy to see him playing as well as he did. And on top of that, uh, our debutants, so the likes of uh, Jake O'Brien and... Sorry. Jasper Longstrom. Sorry, I had to think about his name for a second then. Longstrom or Longstrom? Longstrom, I think it is. It is Longstrom, isn't it? Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the two of those guys played really well as well. Um, so... First goal of the game was through a penalty. Now, this was a really good movement by Dwight McNeil and Calvert-Lewin. So, McNeil actually put a long pass through to Calvert-Lewin, who picked it up at the edge of a box, had a run, was about to... Well, he wants to do a turn into a shot, but unfortunately, as he was about to do the turn, one of the defenders actually took the legs from him and didn't get the ball, so it became a penalty. Now, when it was time for the penalty, there was actually a moment in the back of my mind that I was a bit worried that he was going to send it wide or something was going to go wrong because he just something wasn't sitting there in the eyes when he was standing over that penalty. But he proved me wrong completely. He took the wind up, hit the ball, practically burst the net with the shot. So good job on that for a 1 0. And then for the remainder of what I could watch on the first half, it just seemed like Preston were putting a little bit more of the up dante into it, so they would actually put a little bit more pressure and everything onto it. And just overall, things were doing. We they were doing really well. They were actually really putting us under the cosh in certain periods of it. Javajin had to make a couple of little saves here and there, and he certainly put the screws onto the likes of Michael Keane, Tarkowski, and Ashley Young. Ashley Young. For a guy of 39 years old, he played absolutely brilliantly and left everything on that pitch today. So, massive well done to him. For a guy of your age, you are doing so well as an, ath an athlete. You are really are. He covered all that ground on the right wing, well, on the right side of the pitch. Made some great tackles, really put the effort in, so good on him for doing that. Mikolenko was a little bit uh, hit and miss in some parts of the game. He did play well, don't get me wrong. But there were moments where you'd think he could have played a little bit better. But to be quite frank with you, this is his first preseason game. 
and he's just come back from a ankle injury so i do not expect him to be back into full strength as of yet but i do think the next couple of games are going to be crucial for him getting minutes under his belt especially the brighton one just for the fact that that's going to be our first premier league game of the season so we definitely need him to get back up to speed by then because we don't really have anyone to sort of fall in that position don't get me wrong you could potentially have coleman on the right and ashley young on the left but my main concern about that is more down to the fact that you've got two older players on either side there and they could be viewed as potential holes that they could try and exploit. So the likes of someone like Brighton, they won't be scared to try and, you know, exploit that wing and try and do that on the constants against us. So only time will tell in that regard. So second goal came from our debutant, Jake O'Brien. This is in the second half. So ball came through. Jake O'Brien adds a little hit to the butt. He had a header of the ball from memory. So the ball came in. He heads it. Dominic Cavalloon was able to chest it down. And he followed up very quickly for a nice heavy right foot onto it. Right into the back of the net. Really good goal. Reminds me a bit of a Jagielka style of, you know, goal. So as Jacob Bryan has actually said in, his video, in one of his um, preview videos when he came to the club... He's a box-to-box -box type of defender. He likes to get upfield and he likes to have a crack at it himself. And for a guy of his height, I would expect him to be using his head a lot in this upcoming season. So this is going to be very interesting because we're going to have a back line that is just going to be covered in absolute giants. Because what you've got to bear in mind is Tarkowski is about six foot. Jared Branthwaite is six foot four or six foot five. And Jacob Bryan is either six foot five or six foot six. But as all I, all I can say there is you've got a back you could have a potential back three there of absolute giants and that's something I'm going to discuss when the season actually kicks off so what we're going to do is I am going to be doing a video just before the start of the season it's going to be a couple of days before the start of the season we're going to talk about the potential lineup and what I think could be the best option just based on what I've seen in the pre-seasons because our new signings and like the lines of Lundstrom O'Brien and Dye Ear Burnham, uh, we can talk about Harrison. He's technically a new signer just for the fact that he's come back on loan. So, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. So I'd like to try and implement them into the squad as much as I can. Try and, Well, obviously, we know we've got to sort of bed them in slowly and surely. But I think the way the likes of Ear Burnham and Ndai have been playing so far, I think they could fall into the squad pretty much from the way it go and they would not be out of sorts when it comes to the Premier League they do f look like they could actually fit in rather well and the link up play from the two of them is just otherworldly they are absolutely m they're amazing when it comes to their link up play for guys who barely ever play together they seem to know where each other are and they can do link ups right up a field like it's it reminds me very much of the Baines and PNR connection when they were doing it up that left flank but yeah, now let's talk about the third goal. So the third goal came from a free kick, and that was through John Lundstrom. And it was very much a... How can I put this? It reminds me very much of your... Oof, who can I use as reference? I would have to say it was Andre Gomez. So when Andre Gomez was... When we were playing in the FA... Was the FA Cup? When he actually scored that free kick. So he actually scored a free kick from on the right-hand side, outside of the box. And it was just, just a nice heavy hit into the net. It reminded me very much of that. Because there wasn't too much in terms of Kale. It was just a nice, clean ball. It had a slight bit of an arc about it. But it just went into the net so sweetly. The keeper didn't really stand much of a chance just for the amount of speed that was behind it. And I do think we've just got ourselves our new set-piece taker. So it'll be interesting to see what he's like when it comes to corners and everything. I mean, that's normally Dwight McNeil's territory. But based on that kick alone, I would be tempted to give him a couple of corners here and there. Especially if the one's coming off the left in particular. Because a coming off the left, you're going to have an outswinger. And I think with him being right-footed, we need him on the left-hand side when it comes to corners. So they can come in-swing. And it'll probably be one that would be ideal if we still have Calvert-Lewin. He can get a head on. But... At the moment, that's all up in the air. I mean, there's been teams that have been talking about taking him on and doing other things, but that's a whole other topic I don't want to talk about. But yeah, it was unfortunate, really, though, after that free kick because Lundstrom did actually come off and was subbed. So they'd swapped out Lundstrom, Gavalluan and McNeil for Maupai, Beto and Illuminan Dai, I think. If I'm wrong, please 
forgive me, I just tried to think it off the top of my head. Because previous to that, they actually did um, three, they did a couple of subs at half time as well. So Tarkowski came off, Michael Keane came off, and so did Vitaly Mikolenko. And they replaced them with Mason Holgate, Jake O'Brien, and who's the other one? I actually can't remember. Give me two seconds. I need to fix that real quick because that's going to actually wear my mind now. Mason Holgate, Elijah Campbell and Jake O'Brien came on. Sorry about that. So yeah, they did that at half time. Did a three swap around the back and then in the late stages of the game he did a three swap at the front. So eh, he's trying new things. He is try Sean Dice is definitely trying new things but I do think rather than doing a mass change and messing with the formation all too much I would be inclined to do a maximum of two per rotation. So in the Premier League, when we come down to that, let's say for argument's sake we're winning one or two nil. We want to try and hold on to that league against a tough opposition. So instead of us doing, you know, one swap here and there, we should look at doing two. So let's say for argument's sake, we're one nil up against Man United at Goodison. We want to hold on to that lead, so seventieth minute couple of swaps real well 60th minute I would say take maybe address a gay off bring Jake O'Brien on so you'd end up having a back a solid back five as well as maybe taking off uh, Dwight McNeil and swapping him out with give me give me something come on come on brain give me something we haven't got anyone who I could probably think of to be honest um because Timmy Burnham would be probably in the squad and I think he'd be playing as a number eight. If Drusha Garnagay would almost certainly be in there. I don't know. I actually don't know, which is actually an issue because I should know that. But yeah, you get where I'm coming from. We'd swap, instead of doing like for like, we'd actually bring it back a peg and try and make it more like a double defence if you get where I'm coming from. So you're going to have a set at one, set in the other. So when they're on the attack, they're, they're going to have to go through one and then go through another to try and score, which would be a lot more difficult than having your single layer with a couple of people here and there. But, yeah, guys. Um, so, I hope you understand my uh, slight frustration on 2-4. One being that the stream was absolutely dreadful and the fact that I can't get the drone out this weekend. But, fingers crossed, that does get dropped earlier. And I just hope the Roma game is going to have a better quality stream because I don't think that's fair on the Everton fans who paid £9 for a game. Or have paid out that £35 for the membership pack, which actually has them included. As for the season ticket holders, they do get that free, believe it or not. But even they'd be disappointed because you, you've got your hopes up for these games. When Everton are doing well, you want to watch it all. But when you have streams, you know, going out like that, it's it will get on you. It does get on your rag a little bit. But yeah, I'm actually going to the Roma game. This one I am definitely going to. I've got my tickets there. Instead of going into my usual seats where my season tickets were, I'm actually going to go into a different part. So I'm actually going to be going into the Upper Gladys. It's one of the only... That's one of the last places I have not been since being an Evertonian. I've been to the family enclosure. I've been to the park end. I've been in the Upper Bullens. I've been in the main stands. I've been in the Lower Bullens. I've obviously got the... I've already got the bloody uh, season ticket for the Lower Gladys. The Paddock... I will be going into uh, in the final season. This that's personal matters. Um, got to talk. I don't really want to be talking about it on here. But yeah, the Upper Gladys is the only place I have not been in. I've even been in the away end. So if anyone remembers the 21-22 season, first game of the season against Southampton, uh, my season ticket was still pending because someone was actually sitting. Had already bought a ticket for that seat and. So, so what we ended up doing is the compromise and you gave me a ticket for the Southampton game where I was in the upper end of where normally the away fans are. But because Southampton didn't, obviously Southampton didn't fill out their allocation, they'd given back our upper, upper terrace. So we had the upper terrace. And to be honest, it was actually a decent little view. I was pretty much, I was online with the edge of the 18 yard box looking across and it was a decent view. It was slightly obstructed, but... Where isn't obstructed? The only place I can think of that doesn't have obstructions in Goodison Park is either if you're at the very front, in the park end, or in the family enclosure. That's about it, really, across the family enclosure. They're the only areas I can think of that don't have obstructed views, so I'm going to be glad to see the back of them when we go to Bromley Moor. I am going to miss the old ladies so, so much, but I will not miss the obstructed views. 
But yeah, guys, I have rambled on there for about, let's see, oh. about 15 minutes. So that was 15, there was probably about 10 minutes worth of football talk in there, and the rest of it was just rambling. So thank you very much for watching there. I really do appreciate that you guys watch. Oh, before we finish, I uh, just want to talk about these again. So if you haven't seen, oh, don't know what these are already. These are brilliant pieces of art that were done by Rob, who runs his own little store. So if you follow him on Twitter, links are in the description below. He has a whole wide array. He even does phone wallpapers. He does apparel. He has coffee mugs. He has literally almost anything you can think of. He probably has it. So please go over there and show him some support. I really do appreciate if you do that. I know a few of you, a couple of you have already. But yeah, go show him some support. Mad Evertonian absolutely mad Evertonian you will follow them to the ends of the earth like a lot of us so I really want people to go over there buy some of his merch even if you're just downloading the free wallpaper from his site that's showing him some support so do that at the very least please but yeah guys again I'd like to thank you all very much for watching up the fucking toffees have a great week and I'm going to see you guys soon hopefully so take care and peace